It is Friday, September 11th. Let's talk PlayStation. All right, going to be a very good conversation this week, I can already tell. But first, as always, our PlayStation Plus reminder, the September games that are available right now, that is Street Fighter V and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. You have a lot of time left to download these or add them to your library. Let us start with the PlayStation blog. They made an announcement on Monday that this will be a PlayStation VR focused week, so some PSVR announcements, updates on PSVR games that we already know about, and also a PlayStation VR sale. In this blog post, a little caveat, they did mention that there will be no PS5 news this week. Um, it got to a point where many people thought this read a certain way or it read differently, or that we would still see PS5 related announcements, just not during these PSVR posts. <laughs> I mean, what can you really say? It looks like this is not much of a PlayStation 5 specific news week, but we do actually have items to cover here. Uh, but back to the PSVR focus, um, there is a sale going on right now, so if you have a PSVR, go to the PlayStation Store, check out the sale. There's a lot of good deals on there. You're seeing uh, Astro Bot Rescue Mission for like $7. Uh, you got Borderlands 2 on there, Super Hot VR, that's a favorite of mine, I love that. But uh, a lot of good deals to be had for PSVR right now. Now, as part of those PSVR-related announcements, probably one of the most notable ones in there is that Minecraft is getting PlayStation VR support later this month as a free update for current owners, and it's the entirety of the game, so it's not a separate mode or anything like that. You're not forced to play online with other PSVR owners. You can play with your 2D friends. There's a lot of comfort settings. Just all around, this is the best way to do it, and I'm ecstatic to hear this. I mean, this is just like Skyrim VR or Borderlands 2 or... Uh, RE7, you know, this is an established IP, it's an established game that people are familiar with, and arguably, Minecraft is the largest amongst all those titles, and so now you have virtual reality for what is a very important game to a lot of consumers. But anyway, moving on to our next news story, if you remember last week we were talking about Kenna Bridge of Spirits and its upcoming Game Informer coverage, well that coverage is now here, and one thing we learned is that the game boots up in two seconds on PlayStation 5, and that's from a fresh start, so not suspending or resuming the game, from the PS5's main menu, Fresh start, two seconds, you're into the game. That's super encouraging to hear, and this is really one of the first key pieces of information we ever learned about PS5. If you remember from the Wire.com articles, that was back in mid-2019. We saw Mark Cerny reiterate this during the GDC talk, the Road to PS5 event, and so here we are seeing it in practice. Technically, twice as slow as what they were initially saying, but this is just our first real example from a developer actually saying, hey, we're getting the game going in about two seconds. You're right in there. It's super fast. Uh, the only real conversation we ever had around this was where do where do splash screens go? Those traditional splash screens that always show up when a game's uh, starting from fresh. Um, you know, are those just going to be completely gone? Is that mandatory for the first time you ever play a game on a particular PSN ID? Is that the option there? Is that the answer there? Clearly, they're not necessary. So, you know, they don't really uh, have to be around anymore. It's just a matter of how developers will handle that. All we know for certain is that if we get PS5 and there are certain games that have 30 to 40 seconds of splash screens for every single time you start the game fresh, then we know that that's more than likely very unnecessary and just put in there on purpose. Next up, we've got some new PS5 game box art to go over, uh, even though it's all placeholder art. So, you know, this is, <laughs> this is where we're at when we have kind of a, a slow news week, at least for the Sony world. But we do have some uh, placeholder art that shot up for some uh, big PS5 games on multiple retailers. So we see uh, some art for Returnal, Destruction All-Stars, Sackboy Big Adventure, Demon Souls, uh, also GT7 has one in there as well. Although one real thing out of this is that we do have two new screenshots for Demon Souls. I believe they're new at least, um, so it's nice to see that. It's, you know, not much to go on here. Uh, again, placeholder art, but at the very least uh, we're seeing you know, the, the process begin here, like we keep saying, the marketing starting, we're seeing more art pour out, uh, we're hearing more details from third-party developers, and so now we have this. Uh, the Demon Souls one, I do like a lot. Pretty unfortunate, actually, that that's not going to be the final art, but either way, it's, it's something. But uh, anyway, on to the next news story, which is the PS5 Media Remote. Technoblog.net appears to have uh, retrieved the manual for this remote, at least for Brazil. This is all in Portuguese. But from what we can see, the previously unmarked four buttons on the bottom of the remote are actually for Disney+, Spotify, Netflix, and YouTube. It's important to note that these could be uh, regional-based, so at least in Brazil, this is what the remote would feature. These buttons could be different for North America, for Europe, or Japan, but these would be quick links to, you know, you press them, it would take you right to that streaming service. Pretty handy. Uh, I think that's actually great. I use a remote on PS4. I use the, um, 
the uh, PDP Cloud Remote app. Um, I like and hate this thing. Kind of has some slow input with the button sometimes, or sometimes I'll hit it once and it'll click over twice, which really bugs me. But what annoys me even more is trying to use streaming services on PlayStation 4, because unless you have an app that's previously opened, you can't do the double press with the PS button to go back to that app quickly. If you do a fresh start, you have to go to the TV and video section. You have to glide over to the app you want. That's not configurable, just a pain. So uh, it would be great to have some handy buttons right there. Take advantage of PS5's very quick SSD to jump you right to that application. And uh, that would make it so much easier. Again, one of those very small quality of life things, especially if you do like using remotes on your consoles. For our next news story, we have another PS4 to PS5 upgrade confirmed. This one's for Rainbow Six Siege, and you're going to love this. It's 100% free. When the native PS5 version comes out later this year, you can upgrade no problem. All your unlocks and progress carries over, but also on that PS5 version, you're getting 4K 120 frames per second. So if you play this game, I'm sure you're elated with this news. It's going to look and play beautifully on PS5. And uh, this game does have a very large, very active community. So great to see um, the continued support there for this title. Next up, two days ago, September 9th, was the 25th anniversary for the original PlayStation's launch in the U.S., and Sony hasn't really done too much to acknowledge it. They really did all that stuff last year, December 2019, for the Japanese launch, and that's really the, the true inception of PlayStation, so for this week they've been fairly quiet and they're doing the PSVR stuff. But for the past two, three weeks, it's been an ongoing rumor amongst fans that uh, that September 9th anniversary could be a date for some announcements for PS5. Of course, the 9th has come and gone. Nothing happened. I have not humored this idea on the past two, three weeks of LTPS because it's just that. Uh, it's a theory. There's no credible sources leading us to that. But um, I suspect that a lot of this has played into this next news story, which is that uh, a chain of stores in the UK, they're called Game, if you don't know, they're literally just called Game. One of the smaller stores, uh, Game Guildford, I think, they had posted a tweet pretty much saying, you know, registered your interest for PS5. If you're looking forward to it, look out tomorrow, which would have been September 9th. Uh, there's going to be some major news. Uh, things are about to kick off. They reiterated this on another post. They did it on Facebook. Then it was all deleted. And nothing happened, of course. Um, another thing we saw was uh, a new accessory that went up on Amazon UK for a wall mount that had a date of November 19th. So obviously that's uh, more specific. People looking at that. This is a third party company. They definitely don't know the date. Then we had Amazon Japan listings, I think. Those were for a bunch of PlayStation 5 accessories, and those have a specific date of November 20th. Now, this might be more prominent for people because it lands on a Friday, so that actually makes sense. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, that would be PlayStation 5's uh, launch date. You know, we've been over this before. We can't look at retailers. They don't know. They're all guessing. You would think that retailers find out ahead of time and... Uh, you know, we see games leak from retailers all the time, but it's this is a different circumstance. Games get close to being released, and that's why it gets leaked. Something like this, where Sony's already told us they'll give us uh, notice on when pre-orders go up, if they won't just go up day of, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you have to ask yourself, why would a retailer need to know before the consumer if there's already going to be an advanced date of when they'll go up, right? This is how Sony and even Microsoft have been playing this, of they have not finalized it, that's why nothing is leaked. Only a very select few individuals within this company actually know what they're targeting, what they're looking at, what they are thinking about finalizing. Everybody's guessing. We can't keep hounding over all these little examples. Now, having said all that, it's time to get to one of our major headlining conversations here, which is, it's not even a PlayStation story, but it's just so refreshing to finally have confirmation from at least one of these companies for their next-gen plans. And as we often say, it'd be weird to not acknowledge this, right? It's a major Microsoft news story. We'll obviously be going into discussion of, you know, price, what's Sony going to do, uh, this and that with release date timelines. We're going to talk about all that stuff. If you really don't like the Microsoft stories, we have timestamps. You can skip ahead. But if not, let's get into this. And we'll start actually by going over the timeline of how this played out for Microsoft. Because just a few days ago, over on Twitter, we saw uh, Brad Sams. He's an executive editor for the BWW Media Group. He leaked the Xbox Series S, the name the console design priced at $299 uh, a few short hours later or I think it was like one hour later Windows Central then chimed in with pretty much the same thing for Series S but also claiming Series X is $499 both consoles will launch November 10th then we saw Microsoft post probably one of the funniest tweets I've ever seen in the context of the situation and then they make it official with another tweet just a tweet making it official yes Series S is real $299 that's an estimated retail price, but, but $299 in all likelihood. 
Then the following day, that's where we get the full details and everything was correct. So Series S is $299, Series X is $499. Pre-orders open September 22nd. The consoles will launch November 10th and they're expanding these consoles to the Xbox All Access program. So this is basically like financing the console starting at $24.99 a month. For 24 months, you get a Series S, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, and we have some additional news here, which EA Play, that's formerly EA Access, that now comes in at no additional cost. That's also a huge bonus. Uh, if you want a Series X, the All Access there would be $34.99, and there's no upfront cost. So you would just bring home all this stuff and you wouldn't make your first payment until that first month lapses over but that's essentially all of microsoft's next gen uh, details for their launch date and price and we have the series s finally we know what it looks like it's you know obviously polarizing nobody's gonna warm up to it right away yeah it looks like a speaker <laughs> um the contrasting colors aren't doing this thing any favors i would have done a different shade of white or possibly gray or give it the series x treatment uh color the in inner circles green right that'll give it its own identity um you don't have that weird clash of colors but Either way, people will warm up to it. Now, the most surprising thing about this box is its price point. Very attractive, very affordable. It's one that I didn't see. I think at one point I mentioned, I think it's probably gonna be like 349 at the lowest, but probably 399. So it's, I'm ecstatic to hear that it's as low as it is. Um, they really want you to buy into this thing, whether it's a Series X or S with that all access program, no upfront cost. They want you to just walk away with the system. And uh, there is some misinformation about how people are perceiving this thing. Remember, it's still very much got next-gen performance, which is what Microsoft is labeling for this machine, right? It's just got a scaled-back GPU, um, slightly less RAM, also less storage as well. So you're getting 512 gigabytes instead of uh, one terabyte, but it's still that SSD, that very fast NVMe SSD, and uh, also diskless as well. So it's an all-digital console, but you're still getting the visual fidelity of next-gen games and that's what's important now of course uh from what i'm hearing at least from developers right now the ram might be the bottleneck here because it has less ram and that would be the minimum spec for all next-gen games and so that's what might be a problem for developers moving forward but for the most part with this machine you're still getting next-gen visual fidelity this is just a 1080p 1440p esque machine you'll still get those high frame rates ray tracing things like that so it is a very attractive affordable option for people that want to get into next gen but what does that mean for sony in all honesty i don't really think this changes much of anything and i'll tell you why uh, and if you've seen conversations with me before about this you know where i'm headed which is price and release date has been predictable and unexciting for the most part in my opinion um, release date we're expecting mid-November, somewhere around November, um, October and December are possible, but unlikely, probably before Black Friday. I mean, I can get the anxiety if you are working a job right now that you need advance notice if you want to take time off. <clears throat> depending on your, you know, depending on your occupation, getting close to the holiday season, you might need a very large notice, and so that might be a problem. And I get it, you want time off for it, I'm with you on that one. But uh, we're expecting November. For price, uh, this would have been an interesting variable, except we've got two RDNA 2 AMD-based machines, both shipping with SSDs as standard. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, obviously they have exotic aspects to both of them, but this is not a PS3 with a Blu-ray drive, cell processor, and uh, HDD as standard. This is not an Xbox One with a very expensive Kinect camera as standard. You know, there's not the possibility for a wide range of prices. There's room for a minor one, but not quite a major one. And the second that Mark Cerny told us about PS5's price where he said it's going to be an attractive price given its advanced feature set. That told me right away that uh, the company is softening the blow for a price beyond $399. And we know the company is not ignorant of their past. They're not going to do a $599 console again. They are well aware of the PlayStation 3's early failures, so we're not going to see that. What are you left with? Probably $500. And then it's less exciting when we saw the rumors of Lockhart coming in and the rumors that it was a lower spec machine. The second we learned that, that already told us it's going to reach a price point that is unobtainable from the mainline consoles. Then we saw the Digital Edition PS5 come in, where that's still a PlayStation 5. A spec for spec, it's still a PS5, just no disk drive. So without putting prices on any of these machines, we already have a price hierarchy, which is Series S on the bottom, PS5 Series X up top, and then a Digital Edition PS5 slightly below the main PlayStation 5. So if we already are expecting PS5 to be around 500, there you go with Series X, probably matching it. Digital Edition PS5, probably $50 cheaper. We'll get to Digital Edition PS5 pricing in a second here. And then Series S is going to be so low because the build materials, the, the manufacturing cost is going to be much more favorable for that machine. There's no reason to even try and humor the idea of competing with it. Sony would have to take off way too much money for their, their machines. And it's really just not even remotely necessary because there's still going to be a very large demand for these consoles. 
And there is still this continued narrative that they're trying to undercut one another, right? That one will go first so the other can strike. And I've never really thought that's quite what's at play here. Um, there's certainly a degree of that behind the scenes, probably. But, you know, we can't ignore the fact that COVID has really complicated the launch plans for these machines. I mean, that's clearly playing a role in why we're waiting so long for them to commit on pricing and release date. There's just a secondary interest also of like, well, they can wait until the last minute. And it really is probably more a situation of making sure that they're not out of position against the competition. We're already expecting these machines to lose money. That's the console model, you know, right at a brand new launch. You sell at a loss, you sell software, that's how you recoup. So if you're already losing money on an expected price target, and for Microsoft, we know officially it's $4.99 for that Series X, $2.99 for Series S, I mean, we know we know they're going to lose money on that. Um, and that's normal, that's expected. So to suggest to take another $50 off on the Sony side of things for what will be expected losses at $500 to go to $449, that's millions of dollars that we're talking about here over the life cycle of those consoles that are sold at that price point and manufacture cost. Um, you know, you have to look at the lifetime of that particular machine. Average uh, attach ratio for consoles is 9 to, to 11 games. That might not be worth it even for the digital edition machine, which has a more favorable revenue split for Sony. So, um, you know, and also $50 is negligible. 100 is way too much, right? Undercutting by 100, not going to happen. Um, that's way too much money. So, you know, $50 is so negligible. I mean, would that stop you from buying the console that you want to buy? I think most consumers would answer probably not. And so it, it almost stands to reason why would you undercut by something as minor as $50. Maybe that's just how I'm seeing it. But I think it's more of them just trying to make sure that they reach the same price point and they don't feel that they're out of position or, or grossly, you know, out of price. But really, again, that range is... Um, not very large and because series s is so low as it is you're not going to reach that price point with the digital edition ps5 now having said that what does the price difference look like for the digital machine versus the regular ps5 this is where in context 50 dollars makes sense for these machines i know many are hoping for a 100 dollars difference because if we're expecting the regular machine to be 499 then you would want the digital machine to be 399 but the problem there, even though people are, most people seem to be justifying it as, well, you know, how do you make it worth buying a digital only machine, make it $400? I'm not seeing anybody make the case of how do you charge $100 for the ability to play discs? That would rub people the wrong way for sure. Buying and selling games, um, borrowing games from a friend, playing your PS4 discs, uh, it really is probably looking more like a $50 price difference. Now, if they get to $399, I think it's unlikely for the digital console in all likelihood, but, uh, you know, it could happen. Uh, I think it's unlikely, but it could happen. Either way, whatever price point these machines fall in, it's probably going to be more of a $50 difference than a $100 difference. That would honestly be the most shocking revelation of this whole thing if they make a $100 price difference between the main console and the digital one. You don't save that much money by removing just the disk drive. You don't. Even accounting for that PSN revenue split, you would just have to recoup so much more on the lifetime ownership of that digital console when it's sold at that much of a loss versus the uh, the disk-based machine. But anyway, just to round out this entire conversation, I still think Sony's going to be the market leader for this generation. Uh, worldwide sales, somewhat easily. The, the demand is clearly there. You can see it. But for North America, I still feel as though Microsoft could take that back. In fact, I feel more strongly about that. They've made a compelling uh, argument with Series S and Series X and certainly Xbox Game Pass. Now you've got EA Play in there. They've got a good product there there and so this is a territory that they they've definitely got a fighting chance i mean they were already doing well with x1 in that market already against ps4 so there's a chance where it could get fairly close there but otherwise i think worldwide they've still got an uphill battle um i still think their nomenclature is problematic their ambiguous box art uh you know their first party still has a lot of work but otherwise they've got a very low price box for series s and i would just honestly i would love to see the uh the split for these machines after they're out for like a year you know which one sells more that would be interesting because initially you would think well the low price machine would be the high volume box but this is a little different where we've had entry point skews before and they're almost always not very favorable uh, granted there's no spec difference from previous consoles but the entry point value boxes always get phased out because consumers like to buy the greatest and the best uh, you know, within that first one to two years of that early adopter period. So I'd be fascinated to see with that $200 difference and that spec difference, will the actual, you know, will the Series X premium machine actually hold its own and be considered more of a 
high volume box compared to Series S. I mean, I don't know. I really want to see what that split will look like because it's a brand new generation where they're kind of breaking that mold there. You know, the $300 box, uh, it's it's cheap, but uh, as a brand new console, I mean, you might want to be compelled to, to buy the better machine. So not sure there. In terms of Xbox All Access, it's cool, but I don't think that's very meaningful. I would be shocked if we saw millions of consoles come out of that program, unless Microsoft really pushes it. I mean, if you wanted to finance a console or any consumer electronic for that matter, you could have been doing that interest-free from multiple third parties. In fact, I think GameStop will be offering that for both these consoles coming up this holiday season. So they'll have sales staff trying to push that for either machine, for PlayStation 5 included. So it's not normal to finance machines, at least in the context of consoles, right? We see financing for phones and things, but it's just a different business model. So I don't think that'll really make much of a difference. But uh, either way, we've got the Xbox side of things. That's great. Of course, here we want the PlayStation side and it's only a matter of time. It can't be much longer in theory. So we're, we're getting there, we're close. We'll just have to wait until Sony says something. And you know, once we have the console and we're a year in playing all the games, I mean, we're gonna, I think a lot of us are going to forget, but it'll be fun to reflect on just how, how crazy the wait appeared to be. Now, as an additional news story to what we just mentioned, EA Play being rolled into Xbox Game Pass, well, just as a confirmation, that is not happening for PlayStation Plus. This was very much Microsoft intervening and fronting the bill to EA to include that service into Game Pass. So that would have to be something that Sony would want to do or be willing to do. Uh, we're expecting with PlayStation 5, Sony... Need I, I think they need to do something with Plus to revamp it or revitalize it. You have to do something with, with PS Now, lump those two together. I'd love to see something like that. I think it works. It makes sense. PS Now itself needs its own revamp and its real strong marketing push if you want to have any, any sort of meaningful impact for streaming. We know they've partnered with Microsoft for their Azure tech, so we're still waiting to see any kind of formal reveal for what they want to do with services moving forward because it would be pretty vanilla if we just kind of get what we have now with maybe just one PS5 game, part of the instant game collection every single month. For our next news story, if you remember, we were covering the company Truly Exquisite that makes uh, gold electronics that you can buy for an absurdly high price tag. Well, pre-orders are up for PlayStation 5 if you want to spec it out in gold or platinum or rose gold. So they're accepting pre-orders right now for their machines. They're only doing like 100 consoles per uh, variation, and also you can actually just buy a dual sense or a headset if you want to separately. But that will run you about 650 uh, pounds sterling. I think the headset's 400 pounds sterling, and then the consoles are 8,000 pounds, which USD, that's like well over $10,000, a little over 10,000, somewhere around there. But you can pre order a PS5, you can guarantee a PlayStation 5 that might be slightly delayed for them to actually plate the thing in gold or however their their process is but you have options if you want to get this console now with all of that out of the way it's time to get to let's talk plus the weekly let's talk playstation giveaway where one of you could win a ten dollar psn code i'd like to congratulate this viewer right here i'll be contacting you very soon via email or twitter if you would like to win a ten dollar code it's very easy follow the link down below supporting this channel a number of ways can gain you an entry and i'll announce the winner next week because i am trying to pay for your games those are all the news stories that I want to talk about with you all. Uh, we had a Monday video, which was uh, all the Jack Limited Run Collector's Editions showcasing all that, the Jack 4 mock case, that all came in finally. And there was going to be a Wednesday video, but then the Microsoft stuff happened. I wasn't sure if I was going to do a video right then and there. I thought, well, the PS News is kind of slow, so maybe we can just wait till Friday. So that's kind of how that worked out. But uh, next week, uh, I do have one last unboxing that I forgot I f filmed, actually. So it's like a month old. So that will probably go up. I don't know if we'll do another video because, uh, again, we're waiting to see if Sony decides to tell us anything, which if they do, that'll warrant a video right away without waiting for Friday, but self-explanatory. Uh, that's it for now, though. So that concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Padecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me, and I will see you all next Friday.